The 1998 World Cup will be remembered as the tournament where the style of play practiced by two of the nations involved appealed to almost every soccer fan, in particular the champions France, but also Holland. The Dutch team went home unbeaten, but came off second best in the penalty shootout following a pulsating semi-final against Brazil. Great admiration was generated worldwide for the manner in which Hus Hiddink's team performed. The principles of the Dutch soccer school were manifestly evident in each of their games, the singular and attacking style of soccer is based on the principle of pressurizing the opposition and in doing so, grasping the initiative. Soccer Dutch style means chasing the opposition as much as possible, preferably playing in the opposition's half, well-organized positional play, good circulation to enable the ball to be played to forward players, creating many scoring chances, penetrating by wing play, and the basic rule is always that the desire to win is greater than the fear of losing. Worldwide admiration is accompanied by some degree of astonishment. After all, how has it been possible for such a small nation as Holland to continue to play a dominant role in world soccer since 1974? The explanation for this success can be found at grassroots level, youth coaching and the content of coaching courses. These provide the basis for coaches in the Netherlands on which to learn how to coach with a specific objective in mind. The coaching model has been dominated by the 4-3-3 concept for many years. Highly characteristic features include the role played by wingers and the importance given to effective positional play. Why the preference for strikers playing wide? If you watch youth teams playing with two front men, invariably the players will look for space on the flanks. This means they have to cover a greater distance. The standpoint in Holland is that youngsters shouldn't need to run around all the time, but play soccer instead. The choice to have players out wide also ensures that all the positions in the field are occupied and gives young players a familiar pattern to play to. This is the opinion of Fapa de Haan, proclaimed as Dutch coach of the year in 1998. His success is partly to do with the attacking style of play practiced by his club here in Vain which qualified for European competitions using the 4-3-3. Fapa de Haan contends that the 4-3-3 system is synonymous with the Dutch soccer tradition. In the past, this was personalized by players such as Kuhn Moulin and Piet Kaiser. Their successors today include stars such as Mark Overmars, Badewein Zenden and Fini de George. The recent successes of Ajax 2 can be put down to a coherent 4-3-3 system. 90% of youth soccer in the Netherlands has also adopted this system. The cornerstone of the Dutch school of thinking is good positional play. This often involves just moving around a couple of yards to the left or to the right, so you're in a position to receive the ball. As Johan Krauf puts it, a winger who has to run 40 yards chasing a defender doesn't deserve a compliment for his efforts. On the contrary, he should be chided for his poor positional play. An effective 4-3-3 system will ensure there is always a triangle of players over the length and breadth of the field, so that the player in possession of the ball always has the chance to pass to a teammate. Another important principle of the 4-3-3 system is that the ball can be easily played backwards or forwards. So what does a standard 4-3-3 formation look like? First the defense. Four players at the back. In modern day soccer, more and more top class clubs are adopting a zonal defense system. Each defender is responsible for his own zone and never cut across each other. Increasingly in the Netherlands, clubs play a zonal man marking system. This too is based on the principle of zonal defending. The difference here is that if an opposition player enters his zone and then through an attacking maneuver moves into another zone, the opponent is tracked by the same defender and not picked up by another defender. This was the approach adopted by the Dutch team during the recent World Cup. Modern day defenders are expected to be able to play a one-on-one -on -one system with cover behind. 
Many Dutch coaches therefore consistently choose to play three defenders on a one-on-one -on -one basis, with a fourth defender playing an unconfined role in front. Other variations are possible. For example, Ajax uses a diamond arrangement. This involves a spare defender with two men marking defenders in front and a fourth defender in front of them to track a deeper striker. The two midfield players on the flanks are able to fall back deeper when the opposition has possession. This also applies to the wing forwards. It is the task of the three midfield players to provide a supporting role for their teammates. Not only must they be able to cover a large area of ground, but they must also possess tactical insight. In positional play, when their team has possession, they represent the important third man to whom the ball can be passed. The central attacking midfield player usually has the function of a shadow striker. In contrast to the centre forward, he always plays the ball facing towards the goal when he has possession. This number 10 must be capable of receiving and holding the ball in an instant and be able to control his movements quickly. The centre forward usually plays with his back towards the goal in the build-up phase. He must have good ball control when receiving a pass and be strong in challenges. In many other countries, outside forwards have a tendency to play the ball through the middle. That's why left-footed players like to play in the right and right-footed players in the left. Dutch wingers are expected to be able to control their movements along the sideline, so they can cross the ball from the end line. When the ball is crossed, opposing defenders no longer have their backs to the goal, which presents them with an extra handicap and the attack with a strong advantage. To sum up, here are a number of general principles embraced by the 4-3-3 system. In possession, good positional play, long first ball, skip the midfield, variation in passing, short and long, important, the way in which the ball is played to the central attacker, and creating scoring chances. Opposition possession, close formation, exerting pressure on the ball, forward defending, forcing the opposition to play short balls and preventing long passes, constant and well-organized cover at the back, and continuous communication between the players. Training situations. Foppe de Haan has already expressed the view that the 4-3-3 formation is not a simple option. Field placement is a constant source of attention, and much discipline is expected of players, especially when the opposition has the ball. This, of course, affects the way in which training sessions are carried out, since they should, given the philosophy of the Dutch soccer school, reflect proper match situations. In adopting a 4-3-3 formation, attractive attacking soccer should result. This means that your training drills should focus on possession. In addition, Foppe de Haan illustrates the way in which the concept of applying pressure is prepared in training, a tactical component that can play a major role in the way in which the 4-3-3 system is implemented. Given the level of difficulty involved, it's important for the coach and his coaching techniques to stimulate players throughout into devising solutions to the various soccer problems. After all, this is the case in actual matches. We begin naturally with a specific warming up exercise for the 4-3-3 system. It represents a logical link between the general limbering up session and drills specific to the formation. Drill 1. In the first instance, a rotational system is used in which passing and running within the 4-3-3 system is the key element. The positions within this system provide the basis for this drill, although the players in this drill assume the different positions. Foppe de Haan's coaching focused primarily on aspects of concentration, as well as accurate passing techniques. Points for consideration. The correct amount of physical exertion, not too intensive. Tempo on the ball. Simple passing movements. As much direct play as possible. And execution using both flanks. Drill two. 
In this new rotational system, attention is paid to the midfield players and advancing wingbacks. It's essential to practice the support function played out by the midfield players. They should first play the ball short and then wait for the pass back by the center forward, after which a pass is executed to the advancing wingback. It's the job of the midfield player to fill the gap left by the wingback. Coaching here concentrates on an important detail. The center forward and the attacking midfield player arrive too early in front of goal. The attacking midfield player in particular on the far post often shows a tendency to run precisely in line with the other player. But because there will be a delay while the ball is being crossed, there is a likelihood that he will miss the ball, just like the player on the near post. Points for consideration, slight increase in physical exertion, tempo on the ball, simple passing movements, as much direct play as possible, executing using both flanks, penetration of the wing bag. Training according to the Dutch soccer school should be as specific as possible. For this reason, we now change to practicing drills based on the zones in which players operate within the 4-3-3 system. We begin the drill without the presence of any opposition. Drill 3. Players work at essential skills in four different zones. The two central defenders ensures that a pass is made to the outside forward. It's important in the 4-3-3 system that passing movements can be made without using the midfield. Along the flanks, the ball is moved between the different positions by the defender, the midfielder, and the attacker. These positions must be constantly rotated. Towards the end of the move, two pairs of players, consisting of an attacking midfielder and a center forward, take turns to get into position in front of goal, and then go on to score. Oh, stop. Kijk, als hij daar is, moet jij hier zijn. Als jij hier bent en hij mist hem, mis jij hem ook. Ja, maar de bal die heeft een vertragende factor. Dus altijd tafelblok. Ja, dat moet u, ja, dat was net ook zo. Ja? Oké, okay, prima. Yo, doe maar over uh, Max. Tik. Ka. Tik. Tik. En. Slaap een bal voorin. Slap hem al. Veel te klap. Er zit geen power in. Kom op, Mila man. Dat is een bal voor niks. Hup. Veel meer lef hebben. En komen. En Ralf. Oké, okay, Herder. Ja, komt ie. Tik. 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 Goed. Dan nou even opbouwen. Points for consideration. Physical exertion is related specifically to position, tempo on the ball, simple passing movements, as much direct play as possible, execution using both flanks, choice of position in front of goal, and take the goalkeeper into consideration when crossing the ball. Drill 4. The organization and the points for consideration are the same as in the previous drill. A new element, however, is the extra attention paid to the midfield player in his role as a support player in the build-up. Drill 5. The same organization is maintained for this drill too. In the build-up, the outside forward is omitted. He now creates space for an advancing wingback, who receives a direct pass from one of the central defenders.
A typical feature of Dutch soccer is to work with as much opposition as possible, as this best reflects a real match situation. In the following drills, the opposition is gradually intensified by adding more defenders. Drill 6. Patterns of attack remain the same. The difference in the previous drills is that resistance is offered by an opponent. Begin with one defender for both attackers in front of goal. The drill shown here uses two defenders. Because this is a complex drill, the coach explains it position by position. Here he is explaining to the winger that when he receives the ball, he should shield the ball in order to give the attacking midfield player and the wing back a chance to run into position. The wingers are covered and are played to by the central defenders. After passing back to the supporting midfield player, the wing back enters the free space and crosses the ball. The attacking midfield player and the centre forward move forward to the goal, where resistance is offered from the goalkeeper and one or two defenders. Faba de Haan shows us this drill here, and a variation on it, explaining it to his group of players. Points for consideration, tempo on the ball, simple passing movements, as much direct play as possible, execution using both flanks, positional play on the flanks, and positional play in front of goal. Drill 7. This time, extra attention is focused on the role of the supporting midfield player. He is responsible for making the pass to the advancing wing back. The wing forward also has the possibility of playing to the forward, who is then responsible for the cross to the advancing wing back. In the end, the coach, within this pattern of play, can allow the players to choose their own position, as long as it fits in with field placings and is logical. Points for consideration, tempo on the ball, simple passing movements, as much direct play as possible, execution using both flanks, positional play, and maintain field placings. Drill 8. The level of opposition increases. The number of defenders has risen to six, and each of the midfield players now has an opposing player. Once again, the attacking build-up starts with the central defenders. One of the two defenders who makes the pass must, after the pass has been executed, make himself available for the return ball. For this drill, it's important that the players maintain contact with each other and communicate effectively. The coach makes sure that players maintain eye contact with each other and determines the pace of the drill by using his voice. Points for consideration, tempo on the ball, simple passing movements, as much direct play as possible, execution using both flanks, positional play, 
maintain field placings, and effective communication between the players. Drill 9. In the previous drill, the emphasis was on attacking play from the wings. In the 4-3-3 system, it is of course also important to build up an attack through the middle. We will see this in the next drill. The centre forward, the attacking midfield player, an outside midfield player, and two central defenders are positioned in a long, narrow pitch against four opposing players. The emphasis here is on playing the ball to the centre forward and linking in the midfield players. In order to achieve the objective here, Fapa Dahan has chosen to use a five against four practice game for this drill. Note the narrow field of play. The wingers and the space along the sidelines are now missing. Another additional point for consideration is the quick changeover. Take note of Fapa Dahan's continual coaching, which pays attention both to the technical execution as well as field placement. If the level is sufficient, limit ball contact to one or two touches per player. Here are a number of coaching tips from Fapa Dahan. Choose the simplest solution and don't lose possession. For the goalkeeper, take your time, if not everyone is in position. Change play quickly when the opposition has the ball. Begin again immediately after a goal attempt. Points for consideration, tempo on the ball, simple passing movements, limit ball contact to one or two touches where possible, execution through the middle, positional play, maintain field placings, quick changeover, and effective communication between the players. Drill 10. The last drill in part 3 combines the previous attacking drills with opposition. During an 8 against 7 practice game, players should demonstrate that the movements have been ingrained. The coach continuously checks that the execution is in line with the patterns agreed on beforehand. He is primarily responsible for coaching the eight players deployed in the following positions, the two central defenders, the three midfield players, and the three forwards. The coach will not accept the fact that passes are too short or played carelessly. Fapa de Hand points out to the attacking midfield player and the centre forward that they must maintain sufficient distance until the winger gets the ball, otherwise this space is too small. When the winger gets the ball, this distance should be widened as much as possible. The coach's aim here is to focus on the correct tempo and the use of the key third player in a move. It's often difficult to defend this player in particular. Max wie de bal, Max wie de bal. Dat is 
goed maakt. Kijk, dan doe jij nou daar. En hier raak je de diep down. Hij is hier ook nog En hij is er al. En dan kom jij er nog bij. Dan komen er drie verdedigers. Dan kom je bijna niet uit. Dus jij moet. En voorin die doet het dit. Daarheen. En Hugo gaat mee. Ja. En hij aan de bal. Je hebt. Speel eens in. Je hebt open. Nou, nou voor de Hup. Tik. En je hebt het door. Ja. Nou, dan staat je derde man. En dan is voorin erbij. En Redoe pakt de tweede paal. Jo. Daar de bal. Here you can clearly see how the pass of the centre forward and the attacking midfield intersect at the right moment. Finally, two good examples of how the build-up and the attacking pattern should be executed within the 4-3-3 system. Production stated that 4-3-3 is a system in which attacking soccer is inherent. This means that players are required to quickly take possession of the ball. That's why the practice of exerting pressure on the player in possession by an opposing player is usually exercised here. In part 4, Fabo de Han demonstrates two drills in which pressure training and defensive organizations are practiced. Drill 11. A 3 against 3 drill has been adopted here in which the ball is played along the sideline on a short but wide pitch of 15 by 25 yards. Both teams are positioned on the sideline between the cones. When the ball is played in, direct pressure needs to be exerted on the player in possession. It's the task of the other two defenders to close down the space as much as possible. Coaching is such that the defenders are able to force the player on the ball into a small area of space. The coach explains that by running into the area to the right or left of the opposing player, it is the central player who determines where the ball is played. The other players know how they should respond in such a situation, either by man-to-man -man marking or providing cover.
Kom maar. Oké, okay, Sami. Oké, okay, oké, okay, oké, okay, oké, okay, Jan. Opletten, opletten, rugdekking. Nou. Nu, nu, nu. nu. Oké, okay, blijf bij. Ja, klasse, Jan. Klasse. If defenders allow space to up and up, the attackers will score and the pressure play will have failed. Hey, nou, los, 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 kom. Oké, okay, nu erop. Goed, dat is goed, dat is goed. Kort, kort. Ja, kleine, ja, kleine. Dat is goed gespeeld. Klasse. Oké, okay. ja. Ja, dat is goed, dat is goed, dat is goed. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> If as a defender you get too close to your opponent on the sideline, you can no longer protect the area behind you properly. If the drill is executed properly, the defenders will win the ball, and the pressure play will have succeeded. Points for consideration. Starting position of defender, force player in possession to one side, minimize space, and ensure cover at the back. Drill 12. Listen to Fapa Dahan talking to his players. Note how he gives his instructions. Clearly, step by step, and very much to the point. De bal wordt door Jacob. Careful. The goalkeeper plays the ball to the forward, who makes an attempt on goal. The other point is that the forward gets the support of two other players. However, at the very same moment, the opposition's central defender is helped out by two other defenders. If they win the ball, they have to try to score a goal at the other end, quickly and incisively. Each time the forward has two attempts. Understood? Well, let's get started. Oké, okay, Jacob. Ja, yeah. kom. Oké, okay, druk maken, druk maken, druk maken. Keeper gebruiken. En andere kant. Tik, tik. En nou, en nou, en nou, en nou, en nou. Oké, okay, panden draait door. 1, 2, 1, 2. Zoek hem, zoek hem, zoek hem. En schiet. Oké, okay, klaar. Ja. Yeah. Oké, okay, hef, oké, okay, hef. Oké, okay. tik, tik. Kom, geef druk op hem, Miele. Geef druk op hem, Miele. Geef druk op hem, kom op. Oké, okay, 1-1. Tik. Kom, drukken, drukken, drukken. Ivan, je bent laat. Ivan, Blijf naar de bal kijken, Ivan. Blijf naar de bal kijken. Blijf naar de bal kijken. Oké, okay, Sami. En haal hem eruit. En keeper gebruik je. Dat is goed. Niet te snel. Oké, okay, oké, okay, oké. Okay. Ja, is goed rugdekking, kleine. Oh, Sammy, kop op, kop op. Score, hè? Ja, 2-1. Given the score, the conclusion can be drawn that the pressure play met with mixed success. For that reason, Fapa de Han re-emphasizes the principles of pressure play to his players. The coach concentrates on getting the timing of the man-to-man -man marking right, and also pays attention to cover at the back. Watch the number four. He's able to alternate well between man-to-man -man marking and providing cover. Fapa de Han shows the central defender the moment at which to intervene. When the forward turns, the defender has to make his move. In Dutch soccer, practice games form a vital part of each coaching session. In these games, it is the coach's intention to use all those elements the players have worked on during the coaching session. Coaching is therefore based on the drills that have been practiced beforehand. Drill 13. Eight players versus eight on a pitch 70 yards long and with a normal width. Field placings are in keeping with the principles of the 4-3-3 system. That is, two central defenders, three midfield players and three forwards. 
The moments at which coaching is important are clear to see. The timing of man-to-man -man marking and ensuring good position play at all times. When the ball is won, don't take any unnecessary risks so as to avoid losing the ball straight away. Providing cover, running moves and space between players are also key points to consider. In effect, it involves areas of the game dealt with during the training sessions and which crop up in match situations. So these are the practice drills appropriate to the 4-3-3 system. If you choose the system of play, a style characteristic of Dutch soccer, be aware that you are choosing to play adventurous attacking soccer. Finally, Fappel de Haan emphasizes how important it is that in making this choice, players need to concentrate for the full 90 minutes. 4-3-3 is, als je dat vergelijkt met andere systemen, 4-4-2 of 4-5-1, niet het meest eenvoudige. Het is moeilijk. Compared with other systems of play, 4-3-3 is not easy. For example, during the build-up phase, there are lots of players in front of the ball. For that reason, passing to the forwards needs to be highly accurate, and the ball should be moved around effectively. Positions need to be occupied at all times. In other words, spatial organization on the pitch has to be perfect, which can only be achieved when each player performs his individual tasks properly. Everyone needs to be alert. If not, the ball will be lost allowing the opposition a great deal of forward space in which to attack. As soon as a forward shirks his defensive responsibilities, then you are vulnerable. Everyone on the pitch has to play his part, from the goalkeeper to the center forward. But one thing's for sure, it can make for some very entertaining soccer. Mm -hmm.